the evolution of LASIK is really a very interesting story. I, I think a, a lot of eye care started in 1949 uh, when that was the year contact lenses were invented. That was the year the first cataract implant was put in a patient's eye. Uh, and that was the first year that the um, pre-runner of LASIK was done. Going back to 1949, uh, you had a Dr. Jose Barracare, uh, who comes from a very famous family of eye surgeons in Spain. The whole field of LASIK came out of his head. Uh, and um, the first case he did uh, was manually making what we call uh, a, uh, it wasn't a flap then, he removed uh, the surface of the cornea from a patient. Um, and remember, contact lenses were invented that year. He already had, uh, on another part of town, a cryo lathe. Uh, there were, uh, a lathe used to uh, put the prescription in plastic for contact lenses, but it was also, um, you could freeze things with it. So he uh, traveled across town uh, with the patient's uh, uh, surface of their cornea, froze it on the cryo lathe, etched the prescription in it, and drove back and sutured it back on the patient's eye and, and cured their nearsightedness. That was the first case, 1949. It was all freehanded. Now, of course, we use lasers for everything. So, uh, you know, Barricare worked on this tirelessly forever, uh, you know, through the 1950s, through the 1960s, inventing instruments to, uh, to make it easier so we wouldn't have to freehand things. Uh, and, uh, and then came along a brilliant student in the uh, early 80s, Luis Ruiz, who, um, the other students in, uh, in the residence program re resented because he was made the chief resident when he was a first year resident, which never happens, it was bizarre, but Barakir recognized something in Ruiz. And Barakir brought Ruiz under his arm uh, and brought him into his lab and, and, and Ruiz became his research assistant as well as the chief resident. And Ruiz was just brilliant, uh, uh, although Ruiz says he's really never met a genius other than Barakir. And Barakir was coming with mathematical formulas and all things on uh, how to change the shape of the cornea. Um, and he'd, he'd done it before anybody would even ever think about it. Ruiz comes along and um, learning so much from Dr. Barakare uh, with uh, an instrument that he created with, uh, uh, with uh, gears that would move across the cornea, uh, but you'd still have to move it with your hand at a set rate uh, and a set pressure, and it was very um, dependent on the surgeon's skill, and they were removing the, the surface of the cornea and still freezing it and etching a prescription in it. Uh, and uh, Ruiz came up with the idea, he said, well, why don't we just um, forget about changing the, the, the prescription in the surface of the cornea that we're removing with uh, this instrument. Uh, let's just take that, move it aside, and then take the same, a similar instrument to change the shape of the underlying cornea and then put this cap back over it for quick healing. Uh, and that was a change in the mindset of the whole way of viewing it. Um, and he said, not only that, let's try to automate the instrument. There was only maybe 10 people in the world who were doing it. And then now this is they have to work on it for 30 years already. And so he said, let's uh, automate it. And, um, and that's what he did. So we, could, we go at the same speed on every case and the same pressure uh, uh, on every case. And so it would be more of a consistent result. And that was called ALK automated lamellar keratoplasty invented by Dr. Ruiz. As a result of that, Dr. Ruiz was kicked out of the Barracare Center because Dr. Ruiz got a, 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 a patent on it and it upset Dr. Barracare. Uh, and uh, Ruiz sent, uh, uh, set up his own center. And then he started presenting it to the world and, and it became easier for surgeons to do because his instrument was automated uh, and uh, it was more uh, duplicatable. Um, but there were questions about this procedure, um, and, uh, and I really wasn't that interested in doing it. There were some complications. A doctor in Greece understood what Ruiz was doing, and uh, there were doctors in Columbia University in New York, uh, 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 ophthalmology PhD, ophthalmologist PhDs in the laser field uh, learned about a laser that um, uh, IBM was using to etch computer chips and had certain properties that they thought could be used to change the shape of the cornea without hurting the cornea. And so they jumped on that and started doing research on, on that and it, and it really worked. They uh, were doing it on the surface of the cornea, a technique we call today photorefractive keratectomy or PRK, not to be confused with RK, the old technique. Uh, and, uh, but the doctor in Greece took Ruiz's idea of, with his instrument to, to create this um, 
now we call a flap, to move that uh, surface of the cornea aside, and then to use this laser they were using at Columbia University to change the underlying shape of the cornea to correct nearsightedness or farsightedness or astigmatism and put the flap back to, for a quick healing uh, 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 and quick recovery. Uh, and he named it uh, laser-assisted in situ keratomalusis, what we call LASIK, uh, the doctor in Greece. Uh, Ruiz had um, uh, recognized that, wow, that's better than what I'm doing. So he jumped on that early. I had met Dr. Ruiz, uh, and we became friends. And he would come into Richmond, and he would start giving me little uh, slide presentations on, hey, you know, why don't you do ALK? You know, I said, well, I don't know. There's some questions I have about it, I, you know. And, and I said, well, what do you think about it? Well, he says, I'm not doing ALK. He's uh, teaching all these courses, and all these surgeons are learning it, you know. And, and I said, well, what do you do? I'm doing some uh, procedure called uh, LASIK. He said, let me teach you about LASIK. So he starts teaching me about LASIK. Uh, and um, I said, you know, that sounds good. I'm interested in that. I don't, I'm, he says, come on, I'll do ALK with you. I'll be with, here, hey, I'll come into Richmond. I'll be there with your surgeons. I said, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do what you're doing. That seems much better, more accurate and safer for the patients. So he said, all right, well, why don't you come down to Bogota? You bring your patients. He says, you can't do any of my patients. Bring your own patients, and I'll, I'll teach you. You know, I'll do one eye and you can do the other eye. I'll be right with you and I'll, uh, uh, and I'll train you. So, and he had never allowed any, you know, he had a world famous uh, surgery center and he had no American surgeon had ever operated his center. And he took me on and I was uh, flying patients to Bogota and, uh, uh, and he would do the dominant eye and I would do the non-dominant eye and we would, it was kind of an adventure. Uh, we'd go down with a few patients, fly down to Bogota, which is kind of a scary place do the surgery and come back, and the results were amazing. It was miraculous how well they were seeing. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to learn more and more. I kept going. At the same time, some pati you know, patients were a little afraid to go down there, uh, and uh, I had heard about uh, uh, an island in the Caribbean uh, where we could possibly set up a, a center. And so I thought it would be a great way to, you know, you're training me, why don't we train them the same way? You know, you can be with them during surgery and they could come and to this, uh, to Turks and Caicos Islands, which is uh, part of the British uh, system, and, uh, and uh, we'll train them. And so he said, that's a good idea, uh, why don't we do that? And so, but it was, fell on my lap. I had to organize this whole thing and set it up. It was very expensive, time consuming, uh, and uh, frustrating dealing with uh, the government and, and all that and setting up uh, in the middle of nowhere a laser center, but we did that. Uh, and uh, I would go down and um, patients heard about it, so patients were coming in from all around the United States, Canada, uh, and I was, uh, some of them of course were my own patients, some doctors were bringing their own patients to, to train with Dr. Reason, some were just flying down that I was examining. Uh, before uh, surgery day and, uh, and setting up for surgery and you know, operating on along. Again, I continued my training with Dr. Ruiz. Uh, and uh, another uh, interesting adventure, uh, and it uh, wasn't easy, but it was uh, a lot of fun, and LASIK uh, was so far superior, uh, very safe uh, and very accurate and really a wonderful technique that was developed with this very interesting history that patients could benefit from today.